button that can hear anything you say, okay. uh, which I'm going to do. I just want <laughs> Hello, we're here. I'm just, I, the chat is very small, so I'm, I just want to see a few messages from the chat that's like, I see you, things are working, I can hear you, because half the time I set up my mic incorrectly. Welcome uh, to the uh, special Friday Coding Train episode. My name is Dan Schiffman. There's a lot of things that are special and different and exciting about this episode. Um, I still don't see anybody saying anything in the chat. Oh, somebody said hi. Okay, so I'm gonna take that as things are working. So today is a special episode. There's a few things about this episode that are special. Number one, we're gonna do a machine learning project from start to finish. Training a model entirely in the cloud, getting that model, that trained model back, and then implementing that model in the browser using JavaScript. So all of those pieces, that's gonna happen, and it's gonna, whole thing's gonna take maybe an hour and a half. Uh, to present all this to you, we have a guest. Um, Yining Shi, you might remember her from the Coding Train Brick Breaker tutorial <laughs> um, that she made. I will link to uh, Yining as an artist and a researcher. She's a core uh, contributor to the ML5 library, which is a machine learning library that will be used as part of this tutorial. She's contributed to the P5JS library, which will also be used as part of this tutorial. She wrote the whole style transfer uh, module of ML5, which, uh, so that, and basically that's what she's going to do and present here. So Yining will be here in a minute after I do my long-winded introduction. The other, two other thing I want to mention is this video is sponsored by Spell. Spell is a cloud computing for machine learning uh, service. I did an entire introduction to Spell, how to set it up, what it does, what are the basic commands. Uh, you might, if you're watching this as an archive, you might want to go back and watch that first and then return. But if you're watching this live, we'll try to, if you, and you haven't seen that, we'll try to help you along and get you set up with that. If you want to sign up for an account to follow along, you, you, you can get $100 in free GPU credits, which should be enough to train your style transfer model, I think. <laughs> um, you can go to spell.run slash coding train, spell.run slash coding train. Um, okay, and also thank you to Spell. I'm, if I think, somebody tell me, turn on those closed captioning. For the first time, I am using uh, real-time human uh, written captions uh, generated by a company called White Coat code captioning. So YouTube has automated captions for live streaming, which I've used before, but these are actually being uh, typed by a, a professional uh, captioner in real time as I'm speaking, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, this, this reminds me of the um, kid's book, Elephant and the Elephant and Piggy book by Mo Will Willems, which in, it's like, oh, you are in a book, and the, the characters realize they can make the reader of the book say anything they want. Like, I can make the captioner type blueberry, mango, <laughs> watermelon, right? Th those, those words should be appearing under me right now, I think. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm off track. Um, so thank you so much to Spell.run for the sponsorship. Uh, thank you to Yining for being here. Uh, thank you uh, to White Coat Captioning for the captioning services and for Spell providing the, the funds for those. And, um, oh, and then I'm gonna be off to the side looking at the YouTube chat. So you can ask questions, I will take them down, I'll try to answer them. Other people in the chat I'm sure will be helpful. Mostly we're gonna save questions to the end. Um, but um, but if, if there's a sort of important key question, I might interrupt and, and ask that. Ah, one other thing. <laughs> Yining will probably tell you about this, but I can't resist. Um, to train a style transfer model, even in the cloud on a GPU computer, and we'll cover what that stuff means, it takes a very long time. So we're employing a cooking show-like mechanic here where we'll start the training process, but then have the pre-trained model in the oven already fully baked to bring out and show you how it works. So, but if you watch today, if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to train your own style transfer machine learning model on the, in the cloud using spell.run and then uh, 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 implement that model in the browser uh, styling your own images. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking at the chat. I'm gonna, and oh, so I, th I think that's everything. That's all my introductory stuff, yes? So I am just going to transfer it over to Yining. I'm gonna mute my microphone and then I will unmute it every once in a while if I have something really important to say. <laughs> and of course you can ask me a question if mm. you need to and we'll just get started, okay? Thank Great. you so much, Dan, <laughs> thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Yining and I'm very excited here, uh, excited to be here today to talk about style transfer. Uh, thank you, Dan, for inviting me here, and uh, uh, I also want to thank everyone for watching this video. I hope you uh, enjoy this video. Um, should we get started? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, so today, 
we're going to talk about style transfer. Uh, we're going to do four things today. We're going to talk about what is style transfer, how does it work, and we're going to train a style transfer model with Spell. And we're also going to port the model into ML5.js to create an uh, interactive demo. Uh, Spell and ML5.js are both tools that uh, make machine learning more appro approachable for a broad range of audience. Uh, for our project today, uh, ML5.js allows us to run our model in the browser. Oh, by the way, ML5.js is a JavaScript library based on TensorFlow.js. So our model that we got today will, be, uh, will also work in the TensorFlow.js. Um, and Spell uh, provides the computing power for us to train this model faster. Uh, if I train this model on my own laptop, it might take a few days, but with the remote GPU provided by Spell, uh, it will only take a few hours. Um, let me show you what we're going to build uh, at today at the end of this video. Uh, this is the demo. Uh, you can also see the demo at enin1023 uh, github.io slash style transfer underscore spell. So this demo reads the image from our webcam and transfer the image style into this uh, art. Uh, this art is, uh, this painting is a, a Chinese ancient painting. It's called Fu Shi Shan Ju Tu. Uh, the style is kind of subtle. It doesn't have too many colors. But if you train the model with a really colorful and, uh, and has really obvious style, uh, if you use those kind of style image, you will get a more obvious um, result. But this is the demo that we're going to build today. Uh, okay. So uh, before we build anything, let's talk about what is style transfer. Uh, style transfer is the technique of recast the content of one image in the style of another image. Um, for example, here is a photo here, and uh, here is a, a artistic, uh, this is artwork here, and this technique uh, can extract the content from this uh, photo and also uh, get the style from this uh, artwork and then put and then combine those two together to create this new image. Uh, and here are two more examples. Uh, so how does the style transfer work? Uh, style transfer was first introduced in the paper, A Neural Algorithm of Artistic Style by Gattis in 2015. Uh, in the paper, they proposed a system that uses convolutional neural network to separate and then recombine the uh, content and style of arbitrary images. By the way, a convolutional neural network is a deep feed-forward neural network uh, mostly used to analyze images. Uh, the idea is to, uh, if we take this convolutional neural network here, that is trained to recognize objects, uh, to recognize objects on those images, then this network has already developed some internal representation of the content and the style of this image. Uh, and more importantly, this uh, paper finds out the content representation and the style rep representation of the image can be separated, which means we can take the content representation of one image and the style representation from another image to generate a brand new image. Uh, the convolutional neural network uh, that Gattis used is called VGG. It's a neural network created by Visual Geometry Group at uh, Oxford University. This convolutional neural network is the winner of uh, ImageNet and Object rec uh, Recognition Challenge in 2014. Uh, 
so we can see we, we will see the name of BGG again when we are training this model because we need to use this convolutional neural network to get the representation out from our images. So next, let's talk about the uh, convolutional neural network. It works like filters uh, diff in, uh, on different layers of this network. There are different representations of these images. For example, if this is the input image, this photo here, um, this photo can be represented by all those filtered images at each level. So for content representation, which is at the bottom of this image, uh, we can visualize the information at different layers in this network by recreating the input image uh, from one of those filtered images. And we can see uh, image A, B, C, D, E here. Uh, from the lower level, we can see image A, B, C, they are almost perfect. Those recreated images, they're almost perfect. Um, but as the level gets higher and higher, uh, all those detailed pixel information is lost, but the high level content of this image is still here. Uh, for example, for this image E here, uh, even though we cannot see it clearly, but we can see, oh, there is a house on this image. So this is how content representation look like in this uh, network. And next, uh, we are going to talk about uh, style, trans uh, style representation. So on top of this uh, CNN, uh, convolutional neural network, uh, Gatius, they uh, built a brand new feature space uh, that captured the style of the input image. The style representation computes correlation between different features uh, in different layers of this network. Uh, for detailed implementation, we can check the paper. Uh, but basically, uh, as the level getting higher and higher, uh, we find the recreated style image can match the style of this artwork better and better but the information of the global arrangement of the scene is lost. For example, for this image D and E, um, the style is very clear to us now, but we cannot see if there is a house on this photo anymore because the content representation is lost. And then in the end, after we got the content representation of the photo, and the style rep, uh, representation of this artwork. And we're going to synthesize a new image that can match those two at the same time. So this is basically how uh, style transfer works. Uh, and uh, Gene Kogan, the creator of uh, Machine Learning for Artists, he made this amazing demo video that talks about uh, what a convolutional neural network see at, on each layer. So I think you would have a better understanding about how this convolutional neural network see, uh, sees, in, uh, sees images uh, and how can it filter out this image and get the feature or representation out of one image after watching uh, his video. So I highly recommend to watch his video. Um, and uh, Gatti's paper opened up a brand new uh, area of research. So there are a lot of uh, different kinds of style transfer appeared in the last three years. Uh, we're going to quickly take a look at uh, a few of them here, and then we're going to dive into uh, train your style transfer model with spell. So. Uh, in 2016, this paper came out. Uh, it's, it's called a fast style transfer. Uh, it shows a neural network that can apply a fake style to any input image in real time. 
uh, it builds on Getty's style transfer model, but this uh, network gives similar results, but it's a lot faster. Uh, this fast style transfer has a image uh, transformation network and a loss uh, calculation network. To train this network, uh, we need to pick one fixed style image, and then we use a large batch of different content image as training examples. So in their paper, they trained their network on this Microsoft Coco dataset, uh, which is an object recognition dataset of 80,000 images. Uh, today, we're going to use a uh, TensorFlow implementation of this fast style transfer. So we're also going to use this Coco dataset. We are going to download this data set later. And uh, here is an image uh, from their paper. So this is the original photo. And uh, this is Getty's result. And this is the fast style transfer's result. And it works a lot faster. And uh, the next style transfer is for videos. This uh, model came in 2016 too. Uh, we might think, uh, we already know how to transfer images. So for videos, we can just transfer the, uh, f uh, the frame, uh, each frame of the video one by one and then stitch all those uh, images together to make a transferred video. Um, that could work, but if we do that, we can see the result is not good because the video will flicker a lot here. Uh, that's because the machine doesn't know any information about the previous image. See, you can see it. Um, if we just do that, the video will flicker a lot. But uh, this model, um, this paper improved this uh, frame to frame stability by adding an optical flow algorithm that tells the machine the possible motion from one frame to the next frame. It's also called temporary coherent. So this transferred, uh, also this math, um, this transfer um, video wouldn't be flicker too much. So we can see some result here. See, this video is not flickering at all and uh, they got amazing results from their model. This is the transferred video. The result look great. Okay, let's go to the next model. So this is a really cool model appeared in 2017. It's called deep photo transfer. Uh, the style transfer that we saw before uh, work really well if we're looking for some artistic uh, painting results because they always add some like distortion of the original image. So they don't really look realistic, but this model, this deep style, uh, deep photo transfer can produce very realistic photos. Um, you can see this is the input image on the left. And in the middle, this is the uh, style image. And then on the right, this is the output image. The output image look like a regular photo to me. So the result is super good. Uh, they use something called a fine transformation to make sure that the shapes are not distorted during the transformation process. And uh, the result is just amazing. And uh, this is the next style transfer. It's called semantic style transfer. Uh, it can produce semantically meaningful result. The machine has an understanding of the objects on the images. For example, uh, on this image, the machine recognized that both image has nodes, uh, have nodes, so it uses this information 
during the transformation process. And there are a lot of applications for this model. You can, uh, you can convert a sketch or painting to a photo. And uh, I think the output is pretty good. So this is semantic style transfer. Um, the last style transfer is very special. Uh, it is called universal neural style transfer. Almost all the previous style transfer that we talked about, there are always some abstract uh, style image that doesn't really work well. Uh, for example, if the style image is just a, a black line uh, with a white background, because our model is trained on a lot of objects, uh, images, it cannot get too much information from a line because it's trained on objects. Um, but this model can solve this issue. Uh, this new model is also based on neural networks, but it doesn't need to be trained on any images. It works on any arbitrary image. Uh, it uses something called uh, autoencoder. Uh, the, the encoder has two parts. It can uh, encode something and then it can decode it. So we put our input image uh, in and then it will encode it and then after it decode it, it can give back the image. Um, the idea is to use the encoder on both uh, this style image and also this uh, input image and then use the decoder to decode a compressed version of those two and in the end you can get this result. And this is truly amazing and I think in the future we should port this to ML5.js so we can all play with it. Um, so uh, here are all those uh, style transfer models that we talked about. Today we're going to use the TensorFlow implementation that is a combination of Getty style transfer and uh, the fast style transfer and the uh, instance normalization. Uh, this TensorFlow uh, implementation of fast style transfer is made by Logan Inkstorm. Uh, make sure uh, if we use this code, uh, we, sh uh, we can give uh, credits to him. Um, and finally, we're going to train our cell transfer model with spell. Um, there are four steps. So at first, we're going to prepare our environment. We're going to download the data set. Uh, because we use uh, the VGG model and the COCO data set, the COCO data set is large, so it might take like one hour to finish this run. And then we're going to run this style uh, Python script to train the model. I think it will take uh, about two hours and uh, six minutes. And then in the end, we're going to convert this uh, TensorFlow saved model into a format that we can use in TensorFlow.js and uh, MFI.js. Uh, and here is a detailed instruction here. Um, if you're curious, you can go there and read the readme there. And for step one, two, three, you can also check out the Quick break here. <laughs> there you go. Um, and for step one, two, three, you can also check out Spell's uh, oh. transferring style transfer tutorial. Um, and you can also set notifications on Spell uh, to tell you if the run takes a long time, but I, I will talk about this later. And uh, you can also customize. Uh, environment on spell too, but I will also talk about that later. So, I guess we're going to try to train the style transfer model on the spell. Um, let 
Let me make this bigger. I'm just going to one of my empty folders here. Uh, can you guys all see my terminal? Should I make I it I think bigger? it probably should still be bigger, yeah. I would go as yes. big as you can reasonably <laughs> without <laughs> it being able to still work. Like this? I think that's good, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, so the first step is to set up the environment. Um, boom, boom. So we're going to go to our terminal and uh, we can go to one of the dire directories. We can find a folder. So on my computer, I would just go to cd dev slash live stream. And it's an empty folder. There's nothing there yet. And uh, at first, uh, I need to install spell. Uh, before I can install spell, I need to install pip. Pip is a, a package management system for Python. Uh, it's kind of like NPM for JavaScript. Being Actually, sorry to interrupt you, but you should, I don't know if I'm muted or not. So yes. Um, you should move the bottom where you're typing higher, um, higher up because the captions are actually covering where oh you're typing. Yeah. So if, if you just make your terminal window, like go to the, f to yeah, but e e that, that works too, yes. It doesn't have to be that high up, but. How can I make this well, higher? You should be able to drag from the bottom <coughs> right, like drag from the bottom right of the, of the iTerm window. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, just like that. Okay, but okay. You, don't, you can go two thirds of the way down. Perfect, that's good. Okay, cool. So this is my terminal window. And um, before I install spell, I need to install the pip uh, package, package management for Python. Uh, it's kind of like uh, NPM for JavaScript, the node package management. So if you don't have pip installed, we need to do that. We can do it together. But I think I already did it, so it might be faster for me. So I'm just going to switch to this uh, page to see all those steps. So at first, to install the pip, uh, we're going to download this get pip. I will make this bigger too, or oh, too big. Um, we're going to download this get pip Python script. So in my terminal, I'm going to, oh, I have a dot at the end. So this will download this uh, get pip Python script. And now if I take a look at my folder, there is a get pip Python script. Um, and then I'm just going to run my script. Python get pip.py. Uh, if you're using Python 3, uh, you can do Python 3 get pip.py. And uh, I guess because I already installed pip, so it doesn't take too long. But if this is the first time that you install pip, it might take one minute, I guess. And after this is successfully installed, we're going to pip install spell. I also have done this, so it might be faster for me. So here it said, our oh, requirement already satisfied because I already did it once. So now we have spell installed. So if I type in spell, I should be able to see a set of commands that I can do. I can do spell cp to copy a file, or I can do spell run to run, uh, uh, to start a new run. Um, and I also can do spell login to log into spell from my local computer. Uh, my spell username is Yiming. My password is this. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now uh, I can see hello Yinishi. So I am successfully logged into spell. Uh, and I also can do spell who am I to check who is logged into spell. And it says uh, username Yiming, and this is my email, created uh, August 13th. 
And now we have uh, successfully set up spell. And then we can do prepare our environment. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to use this TensorFlow implementation of fast file transfer uh, made by Logan. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and to clone his GitHub repository. So I'm going to do git clone. Cool. And then I'm going to go to his uh, folder, cd fast style transfer. And now I'm here. Uh, the next step is to create some folders and then put in our style image. So at first I'm going to create a folder that is called CKPT checkpoint. And I'm going to create a git, git ignore file inside of CKPT folder. And I'm also going to create a, a folder called images. Uh, here and I'm also going to create another folder inside of the images called style. This is the folder where our style image will live in. Um, okay, so now if I uh, take a look at this uh, repo, I can see this is the new folder that we just created. And this is also the new folder that we created, images. Um, and the next step is to find a style image that we train, that, that can be trained on. Um, oh, and when we're choosing style images, um, we need to make sure that uh, we could use this artwork and also we can use that image because uh, and we need to give credit to all those images because we don't want to run into any copyright problem. Um, I have one image here. Uh, this is the an Asian Chinese painting called Fu Chun Shan Ju Tu. Um, and I got this image from Wikipedia, um, so I can use this image. But if any of you guys have um, an artwork that, uh, that I can use, you could share it with me and I can train it with Spell and then send back the model to you, if you allow me to use your artwork. Um, but if... Uh, if there's no other artwork, we are just going to use this image. We're going to train it again. I, I already trained a model on this image. Maybe, uh, <laughs> let me check the... They're behind. Oh. They're behind in real time. I Got think maybe it. you should probably move forward with that image. Okay. And I'll see if people, because and then people will do their own images following yeah. along. And then we'll, maybe we'll come up with like a hashtag or something at the end that people can share their style transfer models on Twitter or in the, or in the comments or whatever social media yeah. place is a good place to share. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds good. Okay, so we have decided to just use this image. Um, what I'm going to do is to put this image into images slash style. So I'm going to go to the folder. I'm going to make this bigger. Oh, I don't think I can make this window bigger, but uh, I will just quickly put that style image into images style. I'm going to copy this image. This image is called fuchun.jpg. And I just copied this image here. Um, so now we got our style image. The one thing that we need to do is to get at those two folders and also commit these changes to let spell know that we made all those changes. Uh, so here I'm going to do git add images and also add that folder checkpoint. 
And then I'm going to commit these changes. Cool. So now we have uh, prepared our environment. This is done. We can move to the next step. It's to, uh, we need to download the data set. So in order to train this model, we need some required data set for uh, fast style transfer. We need, uh, everything is in the setup script. So we can actually open the fast style transfer GitHub repo here. So next, we are going to run this script, setup. Um, as you can see in this setup, we are going to create a folder called data and then go inside, uh, go into that data folder and then get this, uh, the VGG model, convolutional neural network model back and then make, also make a folder called bin and uh, then uh, download this Coco data set and then unzip this Coco data set. So do you remember before we have talked about the VGG here? This is the convolutional neural network that is trained for object re recognition. It can get the internal representation of the image for us. That's why we're going to use this uh, VGG model. And also, uh, fast style transfer uses this uh, COCO data set. It's, it is trained on a large uh, batch of uh, images. Uh, this COCO data set is an object recognition data set of 80,000 images. So we also need this because this COCO data set is huge, so it might take a while. Um, but we're just going to do it. Uh, so this is what it looked like in the setup script. And next, we're just going to run this setup. I'm just adjusting the volume of your glasses. Okay. I will Do speak up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so next, we're going to run this setup script. Um, and we're going to use spell to run this. So. In our uh, terminal, we're going to do spell run, and, we're, uh, and this is the script that we're going to run. But here, we can also specify the machine type uh, we, by using this flag dash dash machine type CPU. A CPU is free to use, so we're just going to run this script. And then you can see this uh, emoji casting spell 15, number 15. This number is really important to us because later we're going to use the output of this run to do our next training run. So uh, it's my, oh, see it's downloading this uh, VGG model. Uh, let me make it a little bit smaller. And I think after downloading the VGG model, oh, it's so long. <laughs> um, it's also going to download the Coco data set. Uh, but here I'm just going to do Control C to exit. It wouldn't stop this run, it will just stop printing all those logs. I tried to run this run on spell, and it takes me. Uh, one hour and 30 minutes to finish it. Um, I can also log in um, to Spell to see uh, more detailed information about each run, but also in the terminal, we can do Spell PS. It will list all those runs that I have done before. So I have uh, 15 runs and the last one is running and I am uh, and this is the command that I put. And this is the machine type. We're just using CPU. But we can also log into the spell uh, 
spell website and uh, here I can click on this one and I can see uh, all those uh, all the informations about each one um, this is the round that we just did round 15 um, and it will output a folder called data and this is all the logs and this is the CPU usage CPU memory So this run will take about 1.5 hours, but luckily we have another complete run. I think it's run 13. So on run 13, I also I ran the same command setup um, here, and it's already completed, and it output a folder called data, and we can click on this data to see what kind of output did we get? See, we got this, uh, let me make it bigger. We got this uh, VGG model. We also got the um, Coco data set. Here is called train 2014. So next, we're going to use the output from this run to train our model. Okay, so uh, we finished this uh, second step, downloading the data set, and uh, we're going to move to the next step, training with style uh, script. And this is the whole command that we are going to run. But let's talk about this command before we actually run it. Uh, this command start a new run, and it used this dash dash mount flag to mount the output of our previous run, which is run 13. Uh, for run 13, the output is a folder called data, and we're going to use this mount flag to, uh, to copy this data folder into the file system of our next run. And uh, we're going to call that fo folder data sets instead of data. So this is the mount command. Uh, we can see more information on spells documentation. And then we're going to specify the machine type. I used the uh, V100 machine. Um, we can check more detailed machine type here. Uh, on the spell run slash doc slash for concepts. Here it talks about all those available machine types that you can use. And here there is a pricing table that lists all the machines that we can use. Uh, the one that I used yesterday is called uh, V100. And normally it would take um, 12 hours to train on this K80 machine and it will take four hours to train on this uh, V100 machine. So, uh, but I tried it four times. It only took me two hours to train on this V100 machine. So this is the machine type. And uh, next command, we specify the framework is TensorFlow. And also we are going to get some actual package uh, for those, uh, those, two, those are two actual packages. They're for video transfer, and you can use dash dash apps dash dash uh, pip to get all those packages. Um, and this is the actual Python command that we are going to run. We are going to run the style Python script, and uh, we are going to tell the script that we want the output to be at a folder called CKPT checkpoint. And we're also going to tell the script that uh, this is a, the path to our style image. Um, and this is the style weight. This is the style loss of uh, that model, um, which is 150. But you can read more about it at uh, Logan's uh, GitHub repo about how 
how those uh, about the default uh, style weight and the other information. Um, and we also need to specify the train path. This is the path to our Coco dataset, and this is the VGG path, the path to our VGG model. And we don't need to change any of this. The only thing that we need to change is our wrong number, uh, which, it, which would be 13, because 13 wrong uh, download all those data set. And we're going also going to change the style image name to our own image name, which is uh, fuchan.jpg. OK, let's do this. So I copy paste this command. And here. Uh, I'm just going to replace. Oh, I will just go to a code editor first. I'm going to replace my uh, replace this with my real style transfer style image, which is fuchun.jpg. And also, I'm going to replace this, the wrong number of my setup ROM to 13, because that is the ROM that we used. And that's it. Uh, so now, we should be able to copy paste this command and run it in our spell. And by running this, we are going to start a new ROM to train the model. Uh, let's just do it. And it says casting spell, machine requested down, run is running, mounting is done, we mount the uh, data folder to this run. And it says Tesla V100, this is the machine type. Um, I think it will give more information, but I'm just going to do control C. To, to let it stop logging all those logs. Uh, and we can also do spell PS to see our run. So now I actually have two run running, two runs running. The first one is the setup. I'm still waiting for that to finish. And then this is the training script, um, this V100 machine. Oh, and the one thing I forgot to mention is because it takes uh, a while to finish this run on spell, there is a place that we can set notifications. So it will send us emails when this run takes too long and will cost too much money. So on my spell account, if I go to setting and the notifications here, uh, I can set some like uh, email notifications saying, email me if the round ex exceeds um, $20, things like this, uh, in case um, the round takes too long. So we can do this. And also, if you're curious about the version, versions of packages and frameworks that uh, we have in the spell environment, one thing that we can do is to do spell wrong pip phrase. It will uh, log out all those installed packages for us. So this is a new round too. Casting spell 17. And this is finished. Uh, the total runtime is 10 seconds. And we can see all those installed packages. TensorFlow 1.10.1, things like this, if you're curious about the versions of the frameworks. Um, yeah, so let's go back to see how did our run, runs doing. So this is the 
Scrum that I just started for training. It has been running for three minutes and it's still running. It will take about like two hours to finish, um, but I have a complete run, which is run 14. Run 14 also takes like uh, two hours and six minutes to finish, but here I trained the uh, another style image. See, I had this exactly same run. Um, but I trained this model on this Lotus image. And this is the output of this run. So uh, when we are waiting for our uh, run 16 to finish, we can use this run 14. Uh, this run 14 output a new folder called CKPT checkpoint. And if we open this folder, we can see there are let me make this bigger. If we open this uh, CKPT folder, we, if everything goes well, we should be able to see four files in this folder. Their checkpoint, um, dot data, dot index, dot meta. This is a format of TensorFlow saved model. Uh, this dot meta, uh, stores the graph information uh, and this dot data file here uh, it stores the values of each variable in that graph and this dot index uh, identifies the checkpoint and this checkpoint file actually only tells us the model path but ne for next step we're going to copy those folders back to our local computer. Um, so we can use uh, spell ls to list all those uh, output for us for one run. So I'm going to do this spell ls runs. And the run number is 14, the uh, completed training run. So if we do this, spell will tell us, oh, the output is a folder called CKPT. So I also want to see what is inside of CKPT, so I can do spell ls runs slash 14 CKPT. And then it lists all those four files that we saw on the spell website. And what we're going to do is we want to copy paste all those, uh, to copy all those files back. So I am going to create a new folder called um, spell model. And then I I'm going to go inside to that model and then here, I'm going to copy all those uh, four files. And the row number again is 14. So we hit enter. And it will say copying this file. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Short intermission, everybody. <laughs> Just kidding. We, now we know that two half an hours have passed. <laughs> Hello. We're good. We're good. Oh, I was like, <laughs> oh, two. Half it's been hour. one hour. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> a little, it's actually been less than an hour because I, the camera started a little while before we started. So. Oh. And if if people were wondering if this really is live, yes, this really All is right. live. <laughs> people in chat are like, is this live? Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this is finished. We successfully copied all those four files. 
which is the model, uh, which is a TensorFlow safe model, back to our local computer. So, oh, I created a ROM folder inside of this, uh, the GitHub repo, but it's fine. Um, so now if we, if we uh, list out all those files, we can see all those four files are on our local machine. So this is how we can uh, get the trained model back from Spell's remote machine. Um, actually, we can open that to see what, what do they look like. Um, I'm going to that directory. I just created this new folder called Spell model. I'm just going to drag this model out to the desktop. And as we can see, we have four files. Uh, this is the format of the TensorFlow Save model. And if we open this uh, checkpoint file, there's only two lines in this file. It tells us the model checkpoint path is uh, fns.ckpt. This is an, imp uh, an important information because we're going to use this path for our next step. So uh, just remember the model checkpoint path is this. Okay, so, so far we uh, set up the environment, we download the data set, we trained the model with the style Python script, we copied our trained model back to our local computer, and the last step is to convert the model to a format that we can use in TensorFlow.js and uh, ML5.js. Uh, okay, let's do this. Oh, by the way, this is the folder that, uh, this is the trained model that we got uh, on the desktop. Okay, so if I go back to my old directory, which is live stream here, Um, we're going to use use the scripts that um, is from file transfer deeplearn.js. Uh, deeplearn.js is the formal name for TensorFlow.js. This is uh, this repo is built by Richiro Nakano. Uh, his work is amazing. Um, he uh, he recently contributed a new model called SketchRN to ML5.js2. Uh, you guys should definitely check out his work. Uh, but we're going to use his script to convert uh, the TensorFlow model into a model that we can use in ML5.js. So the way that we're going to do it is to clone uh, his GitHub repo. Oh, I think there is a dot at the end. Oh, okay. And then we're going inside to this GitHub repo. And we're going to put all those check, uh, checkpoint files that we got into uh, one of the folders inside of this GitHub repo, which is, so I'm just going to go to FastStyle Transfer DeepLearn.js and go to source. Wait, is this source? Oh, no, not source, just the root directory. So I'm just going to cop, uh, to drag, no, just copy this folder to the root directory of uh, this GitHub repo. And uh, I just did, it's here. And then we can run 
uh, we're going to run two Python scripts. The first thing is to dump the checkpoints to just to convert the format. So what we're going to do is copy paste this command. Let's edit this in the uh, code editor first. Python script and run this script. And then the output directory is uh, source slash checkpoints slash our folder name, which will be spell model. And then the checkpoint file is in the root directory of the GitHub repo. So it's the slash spell model slash fns.ckpt. This is the path to our model, which we saw before in this uh, checkpoint file. This is the path to our uh, checkpoint. That's why we have this name here. Okay, so now I'm just going to run this script. And then you can see it's done. So it actually created one checkpoint file and 49 other files. And we can go to go there and to see what is the output. The output lives in uh, source six checkpoints, and this is our model. And you can see that we we got the manifest JSON. This uh, tells us the structure of the graph. And also 49 files that tells us all those values of all those variables in each layer. Uh, and this is the format that we can use in ML5.js and the TensorFlow.js. Okay, so now I'm just going to copy this uh, model back to my desk, desktop. Okay, going to rename it and drag it to my desktop. Oh, it's here. Okay, so, so far we got two models. Uh, we have a TensorFlow state model that can work on, uh, in TensorFlow, of course. And then we also got another model that can work in ML5.js and TensorFlow.js. So this is what we got today. Um, and the next step is to run this model in ML5.js. Uh, here are two demos on ML5 uh, website. Uh, and we also have this demo here that you can select different styles, you can upload the image, uh, you can change the style here. And you can upload the image. I'm going to upload a photo. Um, photo of a cat and then click this transfer my image this is the transferred cat uh, you can also play it with different styles too oh I do like this one um, and also you can use webcam uh, and then click this button and you can see the transferred version of the of the images from the webcam. Um, so you can go there and check this demo out. But next we're just going to run one uh, run this uh, model in our P5 uh, in our ML5. 
demo. Um, so we can do this quickly. Um, here we are just going to clone this GitHub repo. And then go inside to that folder, uh, style transfer underscore spell. And we are going to open this folder in your code editor. And in this, uh, in its models folder, there's already one models there, we're going to add our uh, new models inside of this folder. So what I'm going to do is to find that GitHub repo. And inside of uh, models, I'm going to copy paste this model in. I'm just going to rename it to Lotus because the um, name of the art is called Lotus. Okay, so now we go back to our code editor. Uh, we have a new model here and uh, we can take a look at what is inside of the index.html. So to run this, uh, to build this demo, we need uh, p5.js to mainly to get the, the video from the webcam and also we need a p5.dom library to make it easier to create uh, DOM elements for us and then in the end we need uh, the ML5 library and we have some styles here we can ignore them for now and we are also running the sketch.js script here and in the body we have uh, header tag, we have a uh, p tag, and we are linking the source of the image, the art style image, and also we are showing the art image. Um, but I'm going to change this image to the Lotus image. This is a pre-trained model. Um, I'm going to add this image into this image folder. Okay. So here we're, we can say images slash Lotus. So we're going to show that image and in the end we have a div container that to contain our canvas. And now we can go to Let's save this index.html and then we can go to sketch.js. Uh, I'm just going to delete all the code here so we can do it uh, ourselves one more time together. Um, so to build this demo, we need three things. We need a video that can get the images from our webcam, right? So we have video. We also need the style transfer uh, from ML5 library to allow us to transfer images. So I'm going to have another variable called style. And in the end, we need a variable to hold our output image. So we're going to do let result img. Okay, so this is the three things that we need. Uh, and in uh, P5, there is a setup function that will be called once at the beginning. So in this setup function, we're going to uh, use P5.js to create a canvas that is uh, 320 wide and 250 as its height. And then we're 
we are going to use this P5 DOM library to put uh, this canvas element inside of a div element whose ID is canvas container. Okay, so we create a canvas, that's it. And then we're going to create the video. Uh, so P5 has this uh, function called create capture. And if we pass the all uppercase video in, it will try to get the video from your webcam. And we're also going to say video.high because we don't really need the original video, we need the uh, transferred video. So we're also going to say um, video height. And uh, we're also going to create the result image. Um, P5 DOM library has this, uh, I just want to make it a little bit better. Uh, we're going to create this result image. Uh, equals to create img, pass your empty string there. And we are also going to hide this image. We're going to draw the image on the canvas so we don't really need this image. And in the end, we're going to use ML5 to get the style transfer model, right? So style equals to ML5 dot style transfer and we are going to pass in the path to the model so it's model uh, models not model models slash lotus okay and then we we can also tell uh, the style transfer to look for inputs for from our video so we're passing the video and also we have a callback function saying, oh, if you finish loading this model, let me know. So this is a callback function called model loaded. We're going to define this function now. This is a callback function. So we're gonna do function model loaded. Um, once the model is loaded, we can just ask the style transfer to transfer something. But at first, I want to change the text on this uh, p tag into model loaded, just to let people know that the model is good to go. So um, I'm going to select an element. This is a function from P5 DOM library to select a, an HTML element from the DOM. Uh, the ID is status, and I want to change its uh, HTML to model loaded. Okay, and then once the model is loaded, I'm going to ask the style to transfer something. So I'm going to say style.transfer, and I'm going to uh, pass in another function called result. So this is a callback function. Once the model got anything back, uh, this function will be called. So let's make up this function. Uh, function got result. It will uh, get two things. One is if there's any error during this process, uh, it will put the error in this error variable. And uh, another thing is the output, which is an image. So in this, once we got the result, we are going to gave the result image an uh, attribute to hold this image.source. So we're going to say result image dot attribute. We copy the source of this image dot source to our result image. And after we got the result, we want to call this um, style dot transfer again to over and over again to see uh, to see more result. So we're going to do style dot transfer got result again. And one thing is missing because we we did update the source for result image, but this result image is hidden, so uh, we cannot see it. 
but uh, P5 has a function called draw. It will uh, run over and over again. In the draw function, we are going to draw this um, result image. So I'm just going to say image, oh, it's lowercase i, image uh, result img from origin 0, 0, and the size is uh, 320 to 240. Okay, that's it. Um, this is the whole sketch.js. Next, finally, we are going to run this um, code. We can do Python minus m simple HTTP server. If you're using Python 3, you need to do Python minus m simple.http, simple no, simple.server. Uh, anyway, it starts a server at uh, localhost 8000. So now if we go to our localhost 8000, uh, we should be able to see something. So model is loaded. Uh, this is the wrong style source. Uh, I just have to come in and try. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, this style has more colors. So the, the result is a little bit better than the previous model. And uh, yes, this is the demo that we built today. Um, so this is all the resources that I used. Uh, this is the this is Getty's paper from 2015. Uh, this is Gene Cogan's uh, "What Neural Network Sees." Um, this is the transfer style tutorial from Spell, and also for MLFIGS, it has a style transfer tutorial made by Chris. Uh, and uh, I recommend you to check that out too. And this is the link to MLFIJS. And I also want to um, recommend this YouTube channel because I learned a lot of machine learning papers from it. Um, and uh, I want to give credits to those two uh, project creators. Uh, we used the TensorFlow implementation of the fast style transfer made by Logan Ingstrom. And we use the script to convert the TensorFlow saved model to a format that we can use in TensorFlow.js and MLFIGS. Uh, it's made by Reichiro Nakano. Um, and to wrap up today, we trained a style transfer model with Spell, and we uh, run this model with ML5 uh, in the browser, and you can check out the model here. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys <laughs> like the video. Uh, and if you run into any issues when you're training or running the model, uh, you can leave the comments or open one issue on the GitHub. Um, yeah. Come over here. I'm just, some people <laughs> asked some interesting questions. Okay. And I'm gonna just, I'm actually gonna, um, so we can have just a short Q&A session. Yes. Um, and I'm also gonna make the chat a little bit bigger so I might be able to sort of monitor it also as we're talking a little bit. I this is always awkward. We don't have really like a good interview Q&A uh, set up here, but I'll just try. So one thing that somebody asked me I thought was interesting. Yeah. So we, you notice it, it runs like sort of slow in the browser. I mean, it's kind of amazing that yeah. it runs at all. Mm -hmm. um, um, some people ask like, what's the sort of like, how are there, what considerate performance considerations are there? Can this actually run on like a mobile phone? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how, f how far you've pushed that or experimented with it. <laughs> yeah, for now, I think it works well in Chrome. Um, but I know TensorFlow.js also supports uh, iOS and other uh, OS. But it, it kind of, uh, it has like slightly different results in different OS. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. But you know, all these, my experience doing this sort of stuff over mm -hmm. the last 10 plus years, the thing that you're doing now, <laughs> 
uh, you know, in a, a couple of years, that will work on the smaller devices. And then the newer thing will be super fast and that will work on the smaller devices, but it will eventually, this stuff is all very, very cyclical. And the fact that it runs in a browser just uh, makes it so flexible. Yeah. And it's, you know, again, it's to be clear that the training process here is a thing that you can't easily do in the browser. That's the thing that takes a very long time. You can certainly do it on your own computer. You can buy a GPU, but using a cloud computing service, uh, Spell, which Spell is one of many options, um, it's, and, and Spell just makes it super easy because you can just do it uh, with a command line interface right from your computer. Um, there was another question. I don't know if you know the answer to this because I certainly don't. But uh, people were curious. You know, one thing that I've talked a little bit about in like sort of more beginner level machine learning tutorials is about yeah. the idea of a loss function. Mm -hmm. So what is the how? Do you know how the style transfer training process works? Like, how does it figure out like how well it's doing? It uh. does. Uh, <laughs> so for fast style transfer, it has a image transformation network. And it also has a loss calculation uh, network. It kind of, um, I think I need to check the paper <laughs> in detail, but it kind of, uh, it will calculate the loss and then go back to trying to minimize the <laughs> loss function. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I think we can pretty much wrap up. This is amazing. This was like exactly what you said. Yuning said, I think about an hour and 20 minutes, and it's like exactly Yay. an hour and 20 <laughs> minutes. Um, so here's what, here's what I want. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious and excited to see how repl replicable this is for you. Follow it, follow, if you are following this tutorial, can you sign up for your own Spell account? You can go to spell.run slash coding train. Can you clone this uh, Python code? Can you pick your own style image? And can you then uh, run it with ML5 and your webcam and style your own face, the image from the webcam? So if you are able to follow this and do this, share. Let's use, um, this was suggested in the uh, coding train Slack channel, which is a Slack channel for patrons or members, um, was suggested to use the hashtag this dot style. This dot style. <laughs> so this dot is the joke. And by the way, oh. uh, people were commenting that you, you were forgetting your semicolons, <laughs> which, oh, oh. which you don't actually need, but it's just mm -hmm. funny. Like, I, I'm, like I was, this, this dot is the thing that I always forget. Yeah, so. actually, <laughs> I, I use semicolons all the time until one of my colleague said that, oh, you shouldn't use that. Um, oh. It's not clear. And then I switched to not yeah. using semicolons, <laughs> but I'm we good with both. <coughs> we could be here for the next three hours discussing whether you should use yeah. semicolons or not. Um, so uh, this dot style, you can share. Um, you can share things you make on Twitter with that hashtag, uh, whatever uh, social media you use. There'll be a comments uh, uh, section here once this video is archived. And then in addition, I will probably hopefully create a page on the codingtrain.com, which, uh, which will link to uh, with all the links and everything that um, Yining has shown you here. And if a whole, all of those links, like the links of all the resources and all the artists and different things you showed, well, I'll update the video description for this archive, uh, for the archive version of this live stream right afterwards as well. Um, this dot style, yay stream, links at the start of the stream. Okay, I'm just looking to see if there's any urgent burning questions. I have to come back here. We're gonna, we can wave goodbye from our uh, uh, this dot style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but, and then the only way, uh, oh, get the slide. So we can, whatever material that Yuning used that we yeah. can publish, we will certainly publish. Yeah, I will um, share that. Uh, we'll share the slides as well. So, okay, ah, also I want to mention, can, is it okay if I go to your Office. browser here? Mm -hmm. So if I go to uh, YouTube, whoops, YouTube slash uh, coding train, um, and hopefully this is not, this is gonna. Um, oh, you can close this, it's too. Oh, it's like, slow, but I don't want to mm -hmm. close it, it's so wonderful. <laughs> okay, I'll close it. Uh, um, I'm gonna go down here. You can see that next up, scheduled for, um, whoops, scheduled for October 5th, uh, I think we're gonna do it earlier. It says 8 a.m. there, but that specific time it's gonna be 11 a.m. Eastern time, which is some other time. Um, Nabil Hussain is going to come do a, another tutorial with all of the same elements. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. No, it's okay, I got it. I'm so used to doing this. Um, with all the same elements, uh, ML5, Spell, and um, TensorFlow um, to train something called an LSTM, which is a long, short-term memory network. This is a kind of neural network that's well-suited for sequences. So if you wanted to train a model to learn about how uh, 
characters appear next to each other in text, or musical notes appear next to each other in a song, or how strokes appear uh, in sequence in a drawing. There's something called sketch RNN. There's so many uh, possibilities, but we're going to, in that live stream, Nabil will show you how to take a text from your favorite author and train a machine learning model on spell.run cloud computing service to uh, uh, download that model and then have the model generate new uh, text in the style of that author in the browser. So that's coming uh, two weeks from today at a slightly earlier time. And next Friday, I'll be back. I have this very long list of things I need to get to. So I don't know what I'm gonna do next Friday yet. I'm trying to schedule stuff better in advance. Um, and um, yeah, so stay tuned. Oh, I, I know I forgot something. Um, if, a lot of, if certain things that you couldn't follow today, I want to mention that would be helpful to you. I recently did a whole set of workflow videos, and Yining pretty much is using the exact same stuff, <laughs> um, just sort of coincidentally, I guess. But so if, if you know, running Git, using Visual Studio Code, um, running stuff from your terminal, and then I also have a whole intro to Spell video. So a lot of the stuff of like, how do I install Spell again? What does it do? Where do I sign up? Um, you can find that in the intro to Spell video as well. So I'll link to all that stuff. If, if there's a moderator in the chat who can <laughs> link to some of those things right now, great. But uh, I'm gonna go, this is, uh, this is the awkward part because I, <laughs> I've yet, um, I've yet, I, um, uh, CJ, Coding Garden with CJ is another wonderful YouTube channel. CJ was here doing a guest spot yeah, and showed me all these things that you can do in open broadcast studio. Like I could just press a button and then an outro video would play, but I don't have that. So I have to just, we just have to walk awkwardly to the side. I have to turn the stream off over here on a laptop. Thank you for watching. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, everyone. I uh, look forward to hearing from you in the comments and on Twitter and all the other various places. Um, bye. Thank you. Thank you to Spell. Thank you to the. Uh, to white coat captioning, and thank you especially to Yining. Thank you, Dan. I <laughs> can't find the page. Stop. I got it. Stop streaming.